time it's 7 50 p.m this is probably gonna be my last video for the night um so tomorrow i have another job op i mean a jo job possible job i guess it's a, f a free open walk-in interview and um a free open walk-in walk-in into job interview and um but to be honest it does look like a part-time minimum wage job though but i'll at least try and it looks like a fun place um so i'm gonna try to do that this video won't be i don't want to try to because i feel like i already did longer videos earlier today and so i don't want to bombard y'all with too much <laughs> but it's not my obje objective to try to you know hurt anybody or put anybody down or tear anybody down or throw anybody under the bus or anything like that but when people do do or say things that hurt me i feel like i gotta try to talk it out to somebody who will be like emotionally supportive and um you know people don't they don't really um care about being emotionally supportive of others anymore nowadays and i want to be able to be more loving and more forgiving you know towards people i usually am and a lot of people describe me as a very nice person, but once their minds become brainwashed about the lies about me, then they'll say, "Stay away from her. She's a bad." You know, every all the false rumors and lies. But um, I'm trying to not let what I've been going through um to to con you know consume me it's like I, I know i gotta pick myself back up and keep fighting the battle <clears throat> and just because the world turned against me i gotta remind myself that i don't think jesus would turn against me just because people did so i'm trying to keep my faith in the lord jesus christ and not give up <clears throat> despite what people the way people treat me and stuff I don't know if y'all can hear me with the heater on. Let me turn the heater off. <clears throat> and so it's like, well, I turned it off. It's, it, it'll take a couple of more seconds, <clears throat> but, um, Tonight is supposed to be 47 degrees. And, um, but I was told to pay tomorrow for the, um, I was told to pay tomorrow for, and that's all I would have left is one more week here. <clears throat> and then, to try to have just enough money to be able to go to my storage unit and then end up being back back downtown suffering on the streets. And, you know, that will be like the last of my money, you know, if I don't have any extra. I mean, I know I won't have any extra. <clears throat> so people talk about, you know, they suggest to go get a job like it's so easy and it's not <clears throat> even i think it was to even today i had a job rejection from indeed.com or was it today or yesterday so i fear being back on the streets again and being forced to suffer again and then you know dealing with religious narcs they'll make it like as if i'm back on the streets as a punishment for my sins or or that the most high or that God 
you know, punish me for for my sins or or or, or whatever or 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 for you know, for you you being wicked or, or whatever. <clears throat> so. I mean, I mean, God does punish for sins and stuff, but, you know, I just want these, you know, religious narcs to stop thinking you're all special because if you sin and do wrong, you'll get chastised and punished too. But, I mean, and it seems like religious narcissism is getting stronger as well i mean you glorify yourself as part of the three percent i mean i'm talking about this lady i don't know how to pronounce her name and i'm not i, I i'm assuming she's african <clears throat> and she professed to be christian and prof and she tried to make it like as if 97 percent of people will go to hell and she'll be one of the three percent to go to heaven and she made it like as if she's rejoicing, you know, and I'm like, well, well, you might, I mean, who told you you were special enough to be, um, part of the 3% bracket that you claim that is going to heaven, but everybody try to make it like, I'm so full of sin just because of their personal hatred towards me. I'm so full of sin and evil and wickedness, and I'm the only one who deserves to be punished with hell. Like, as if everybody's worthy to go to heaven or everybody's going to heaven except me. <clears throat> you know? So, it's like, I haven't yet found anyone else who's actually a biblical Christian to the T. We all got some stain, including, I, I know, I seem like I got several stains spiritually, you, you know, and we all need to be washed clean and white as snow, have our sins washed away by Jesus' blood, you know, and none of us are really perfect. But so many stone throwers, um, it's like a, I mean, I've also done, you know, researching and stuff, you know, I guess part of Christian research, but I didn't realize it was considered narcissism in the church. Um, narcissism in the church and dealing with church bullies. And stuff like that. Um, I didn't realize that was narcissism related. And people being wounded spiritually, psychologically, and mentally and emotionally by abuse of church pastors and abuse of church members as well. And, and, and sometimes it can be like a workplace mobbing or a community mobbing kind of situation where you just, everybody point the finger out at you and you're singled out at, in church. And mobbed out of the church. So. Um, and the same thing with the so-called TI community as well. I don't fit anywhere. <clears throat> and so. Speaking of that. <clears throat> this guy named Richard Moore. Who has. Um, he's one of the so-called leaders in the TI community on Quora, and I remember he was nice and respectful on Quora, but he, um, I was wondering why I tried to click on his live video and realize that the video wouldn't play, and then I tried to comment, and I don't realize my comment wasn't there, and I tried to comment before, and I think he got hateful and blocked me. Um, he calls himself U.S. Anti-Gang Stalking Association. And recently he did a video of himself having possession of a directed energy weapon that he said the perps left on his yard or, or somewhere. And he's based in Tupelo, Mississippi, I think. Or not Tupelo, somewhere in Mississippi. 
but I felt devastated, you, you know, that another professed target. And I, I feel like, well, your ass seemed like you wanted to pop your fakes anyway. So, um, I, I felt stabbed and emotionally stabbed in the heart again because I'm like, I never did him anything. But he probably heard the lies and false rumors that Candy is a troublemaker. Candy's trouble. Stay away from her. So, um, I had to deal with a lot of pro oppressive, popular fake T.I. perps on Quora as well. You know, they, they got the elite, fake elitist members at the top. And the real T.I.s that are actually suffering get treated like shit. And don't really, they make sure we're ignored and don't really don't get any attention. <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. I don't want to say that Mr. Richard is fake, but I'm disappointed that he blocked me for no reason. <clears throat> and I never did him anything. I never got into an altercation with him or none of that. But he probably has me blocked or feels a certain way. <clears throat> um you know, because of maybe it, some, what somebody said about me or something like that. So, I mean, it's hard, you know, being singled out and hated. If we all singled out and hated for by society, and if targeted individuals, if the perps consider us troublemakers, what makes you think you're better than me and you call me a troublemaker? So, um, it, it's hard for me to try to get over that hurdle. I, I mean, but it's very hard for me to try to stay strong and stand stronger when everybody's rejecting me. Even people who say that they're Christians and love to say God bless and everything, and they all turn against me like I'm the worst, most vile person in the world. But it's like convicted criminals get more respect and more love and people to care about them than I get. And, you know, people who actually are pedophiles and, um, you know, rapists, pedophiles, thieves, you know, Satanists and everybody. It's like, I'm treated like as if I committed the worst sin a person could ever commit that's unforgivable. And people stay, when they get mad at me and don't like me, they stay mad and they stay hating me forever. <laughs> like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm an adult now. And if I come cross paths with somebody I knew in elementary school, they they still act like as if they, st they hate me from elementary school. Even the teachers, people who used to be like my teachers or teacher assistant or whatever, by the time I, tw I was 22 years old, you still hated me from when I was 11. And you were supposed to be like um, a teacher assistant or a hall monitor or, or something like that. Or a substitute teacher. But I didn't realize it was part of the gang stalking. Um... It's like people being so judgmental um, and nitpicky and overly critical and stuff. But I got to pick myself back up. I, I, it's like, I f wait, what's today? Our, it's, today is Thursday? Damn. So I pretty much feel like I had a rough week all week. And before then, everything was kind of mellow for a while. But I know I had it rough, you, you know, around the time when I was dealing with the workplace mobbing and stuff. And so then, um, I mean, people think it's the coolest thing in the world to hate candy. And then... Making false rumors that Candy's not loyal and that Candy's a grimy, dirty person that, you know, quick to backstab and like, 
my own twin sister making these false rumors that Candy is not no loyal. Candy doesn't know loyalty and stuff like that. When she's never name one time she ever been loyal to me. Never, never, ever, ever. Always has um backstabbed and betrayed me and treated strangers better than me. Well, her fake vocal letter to the TI community and convincing everybody from the TI community why they're supposed to hate me. Brainwashing my neighbors in Los Angeles against me, telling them a bunch of stuff that you know damn well is nothing but lies. And think that lying is funny. And thinking that it's better to lie and be well liked than to be hated for speaking the truth. And bully, harass, and laugh at, and abuse your own damn twin sister. And, le and make your own twin sister suffer. <clears throat> so, um... I was... I'm glad to be able to get to vent and express my feelings. And, um... With, without having to worry about being condemned or punished or attacked or whatever, in, in which I'm pretty sure I will. But, um, but, but it's like, I'm not trying to do evil. I'm not trying to do bad. And if I was such a horrible person, why am I not in jail or prison? Why am I not locked up? <clears throat> so, excuse me. I was, I'm, I'm worried. Well, as I told y'all, I have just enough money to um stay here for one more week. And I'll say I probably got Well, with the refrigerated food, I'll say I got like maybe, maybe, um, I probably have, I can stretch, I guess, I guess I can stretch it out to a week's worth of food if I eat two meals. I mean, and I got extra cereal and stuff, but I would hate for the extra so-called prepper food to have to be, you know, you know, if I have to be back on the streets, I'm scared. You know, I don't want the food to, you know, you know, I don't know what, I mean, it would be hard for me to donate or give away food in the, um, in this, I'm sorry, the gnats. It would be hard for me to give away food in these, um, you know, in the, in the motel. I mean, this complex or whatever. And the food that I have. Most people won't want it anyway. Who the hell wants seaweed snacks? They don't, <laughs> you know, but I have some seaweed snacks and a few other things, you know, trying to survive. And um, people who are con con who not health conscious, they don't care about coconut oil. So, um... But maybe I'm, I probably won't have anything to worry about. Maybe God might put something in my life to keep me off the streets or a better job opportunity or, or something. Maybe he might open a door to prevent me from being on the streets. But, um, if people might make it like, oh, Candy been a bad girl and been causing all kinds of trouble this week. So God, don't bless her. I mean, if, if they'll be that, if they'll say, perps will say something like that. But, um, or they might use witchcraft and say something to curse me to be punished with staying you know, being homeless on the streets. So, 
I know I have to be out of here, out of this room before next month. But I don't know, excuse me, I don't know what help I could get. Um, I don't know what help I could get um, within the next week. I mean, the temporary fundraiser is done, but I still have my PayPal and my Cash App. I have my store and I have the, um, my blog, if y'all want to look at it, um, trying but you know the fact that everybody turned against me they don't even give me the time of the day or you, you know i'm considered special needs and disabled and then still hate it like i'm a bad person but i have a bachelor's degree but um you know been blocked from put, getting being able to put it to use all these years so I, and, and so many people who have, like, people with narcissistic personalities make it like as if you burned all your bridges and that's why nobody wants to help you. You burned all your bridges and nobody cares about you or whatever. But that's part of the gang stalking script, as y'all saw in a previous video. So, I'm thinking about, you know, if... I'm becoming more panicky and fear and fearful. And I saw a lady in a YouTube video to, that she did today. She was saying that she can see the fear in people's eyes. And I mean, I'm sorry, hear the fear in people's voices. <clears throat> that she said she can hear the fear in their voices with, um, you know, food insecurity and stuff. There is no shortage of food. There is no shortage of food. Oh, they're hitting me with frequencies exactly right here. So hard. <clears throat> there is no shortage of food. Just like with the money. Well, the, the money that we receive... I heard the real money is gold and silver. But the money we receive, like paper dollars and stuff, is fiat currency, is fake. And so we living off of fake money to survive. <clears throat> but that's the only way we can freaking survive. So the government manufactured to hold back the food supply and I know I'm pretty sure it's gonna come here too pretty soon, but I'm freaked out and scared. <clears throat> and I'm I, I mean I need to brush back up on my survival learning about survival and in times survival and stuff. And Los Angeles was a good place. I mean, I know they say it's a bad place to deal with the new world order, <clears throat> but it's a good it's a good place um to see a whole bunch of wild edibles and like foraging for wild edibles and dumpster diving and also um even you know foraging for you know trees with fruit fruit trees and stuff like that and they have certain community gardens and everything like that <clears throat> but I have some gardening seeds, but I think they're expired. So I don't know what would happen if you try, if I can research or look up, what would happen if you try to um, plant an expired, let's say, for example, if you try to plant an expired celery seed or something like that, what would happen? <clears throat> but I have the, some vegetable seeds. I have the seeds, but I don't. I don't have anywhere to plant them. <clears throat> I don't have anywhere to plant them. Um. So. Um. And I, I, I still 
don't know that much about gardening, gardening, even though I tried it out and something I'm not good at, something I, I'm poor at doing, I guess it's part of my disability and my cognitive functioning and, you know, <clears throat> but in part, you know, the fact that I had two strokes when I was five, so I suffer reading comprehension and stuff. <clears throat> so... I mean, <clears throat> if if people make it like there will be really no police, like in a martial law kind of situation, <clears throat> that really regular police will be suspended and it'll be hard to get in any help. But they'll have the militarized police that'll be ready to put you in jail or a FEMA camp. And, you know, I feel like I wouldn't know where to go, but... If there was a car for me to have, I heard it's best to have an older car because a new car would probably, that they can turn a chip off in your in your new car and, and you won't be able to go anywhere. But I heard if you've got an old car that runs good and can get out of Dodge, or if you have like a bug out bag and stuff like that. But I, I heard that, with this food shortage thing, we need long-term survival. And I've seen some preppers, I wonder, they have years. I mean, they, these, as I said, these some of these preppers, they don't appear like as if they're employed or anything. But they live in a nice house and have their own house and fully stocked with Everything a person could need. And then I heard that they sometimes can have another house. But I don't even know how they acquired that money to be able to um, to be able to, to do all that. And they got possession of, um, you know, more than one house and a vehicle and been prepping for years. And they, some of them got guns, ammo, every all that, everything. But me being disabled... Um, me, me being seen as a quote-unquote mental patient, you know, it's numerous people saying that with a mental health label, you, you, you don't, you know, you won't be able to get to legally own a gun. So a lot of targeted individuals are labeled as mental patients and can't get a gun for, you know, protection during end time survival. And so I was scared during Hurricane Sally that I, I, it was like a last minute thing and me struggling and suffering in my situation and being distracted with the gang stalking. I was prepped with, with a few days worth, worth of food, but I somehow don't know why I ended up not getting any water, but, um, and plus I took the food I had with me in my hands and didn't have enough money to, um, get me an Uber or a cab to take me to back to the, the hotel room at that time. But it was very scary that, um, People were selfish and stingy enough that, and I even said, I will pay you. They still, you know, they still refused to give me any water to drink. And so that was frightening. I mean, for Hurricane Sally, that people would need, people would, didn't even want to give me any water to drink. And I even I offered to pay them and they still said no. And that's, that's scary right there. And I don't even know if they probably were gang stalkers. And even some of the firefighters who came to stay there at the hotel when I was staying at the Quality Inn Hotel where I'm wrongfully banned from. <clears throat> but I don't know if I'm still banned because it's been over a year. So um, I don't know if I'm banned forever. But I already told y'all that story about what happened with Brittany, the, the Jamaican perp Brittany. The narcissistic Jamaican per Brittany, you know, they all sided with her and wouldn't listen to me.
So I'm going to go do some more research online about, I mean, I, I, I read on, like when I went to search it, you know, foraging wild edibles or food foraging Pensacola, Florida, and somebody said it's illegal to, I'm, I'm going to do re deeper research. They try to say it's illegal to forage for wild food in, in the state of Florida. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. But in Los Angeles, people can do it all the time. So this watercress that I ate, it was packaged in a bag and sold in a store. And I just had me some watercress and my tongue is, my tongue tastes a little bit like ivory soap. And, um, for some, I didn't know, I'm saying the watercress kind of tastes like a little bit like ivory soap. And it seemed like it tastes, it's like green leafy vegetable that tastes like a mild, um, it tastes like a, like a mild version of radishes. But, um, let's see, for breakfast, I had just regular life cereal and some milk and then for lunch i had lasagna and for dinner i had two slices of the um ezekiel four and nine bread a chicken like a piece of chicken from the whole chicken i had the leg quarter part of the whole chicken and i said i love dark meat I don't like white, I don't like chicken breast, but I like chicken wings, but I love leg and thighs. I think thighs is my ultimate favorite. So I had chicken, that, um, and, and I forgot to eat, I forgot to eat the, um, have some hummus with my bread, so I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, so... I forgot to have some hummus with my bread. And um, so I had the hummus right after. It was edamame, I think how you pronounce it, the soybean. And I didn't mean to get that. I was trying to get the avocado one, but then it turned out to taste good. Um, <clears throat> so it's ed soybean edamame hummus. And uh, it was buy one, get one free. I meant to get avocado. And also the other one was the black bean hummus. But so I had hummus, Ezekiel 4 and 9 bread, chicken, watercress, and um, a little bit of, um, I kept, I didn't get around to taking it, but I've been eating the um, kimchi to try to help with the probiotics in my gut. And I also had like a, a big spoon of solid coconut oil. I know that sounds like a lot, and I haven't been eating the garlic this week, but the stuff that I have, it has some garlic in it, and I had some barbecue sauce on my chicken, you know, not a whole lot, so I hate being panicky and confused and don't know what to do, and, um, you, you know, afraid of having nobody to help me with anything but one thing it's like when pe people with narcissistic per the narcissistic perps and family members have had their minds made up to believe that i'm not human that candy is not human and so they feel like they can use that to justify treating me like shit and um disrespecting and abusing me and stuff and i feel like this it's like i realized that it seems like society has more compassion on a homeless man than a homeless woman. When I thought, I, especially I said, there's nothing out here for single women. And people don't believe you when, when you tell them that, you know, as a single woman, it's not, I mean, it's easier for, for a man to get into a shelter than a single woman. It's like in society, in order to be, if you're homeless, they'll take you seriously if you have children, but if you're single, 
then you you got it. If you're a single woman that's homeless, you and especially homeless on the streets, you got it the worst. And people ain't here. People people out here ain't trying to help. You know, out in society, they turn their nose and don't want to turn their nose up and don't want to help. And I don't even do drugs. I don't even do drugs. And I don't even take the money that's donated to me. As I was saying, you know, I don't take the money donated to me and spend it on when I'm, you know, something opposite of what I say I'm going to spend it on. But when I have my own job and stuff, you know, every, like maybe once a week or, you know, maybe once in a blue moon, I might treat myself to something, a little bit of something, but never fancy you know, I never really ate like a $40 meal or more money. You know, I think the most I ever, ever spent, you know, on a so-called fancy meal would have been like um, $30. But as I said, you know, downtown is usually expensive, but... You know, I usually, that's what my, like me trying to reward myself for getting a new job, you know, treat myself that one time. And sometimes if you try to show something positive or something good you did for yourself or self-care, then, the, you know, the narcissistic perps will take and twist it to something that's not even what you're trying to do, you know. And other targets, you know, we try to do certain things for self-care to prevent ourselves from losing our minds and going crazy. We try to do something with self-care and, um, self, self-care, you know, to try to keep our own sanity, but we don't do it all the time. We mostly deprived. So, I mean, if we, if we want to do something like our own personal art therapy or writing, or if we want to eat a nice meal for one, ooh, that's, if we want to eat a nice meal for once, you know, but I talked way longer than I intended. I meant to just do a straight up video to talk, just talk, do a brief video and talk about foraging um, for wild edibles or, um, dumpster diving or trying to look for, like, I even try to Google search since, since the grocery stores, you know, there's scarcity of grocery stores and panic buying and stuff. Come on. Man, it's not, sorry. I mean, panic buying and, um, grocery store scarcity. I try to be, research well you know how to how to survive without grocery stores and stuff but they have some people who have own have you know do homesteading like homesteading and prepping and stuff like that <sighs> wow that gnat got directly onto my bread bag Oh man, move off my stuff. These gnats are trouble. I don't know where the gnat went to now. Oh no, there it goes. These gnats are trouble. Wow. I'm not sure if this bread is safe to eat now. Since um I sprayed I think I'll be all right. Try to, um, but anyway, so I apologize. This video turned out to be longer than I intended. And, um, I don't know. I just feel like this is the, one of the only things that's helping me keep, keep calm and keep my composure or try to stay sane. If this is what works, but y'all, but if y'all want to think I'm aggravating or annoying, it's because you, cause your personal hatred towards me 
and hoping that you can run me off YouTube or somewhere. But um, I might try to do a blog post and put the links in the blog for um, you know, if I and after I research what I can find with um the idea of trying to survive without a grocery store or something. I mean, I'm frightened and panicked and um and being targeted and watched all the time. You really can't hide anything. I can't hide anything. As a homeless person, my things have been stolen. So I don't know what good place I can hide if I'm being watched in surveillance 24-7 all, all day, every day. Um, if I'm being watched all the time. So that's one thing. But it's like the only time I'm on somebody's mind is when, when they want to hurt and destroy me. People, I'm, people don't think about me for the good. You know, it's like most people go their day and they don't even think about me or they don't worry about me. And a lot of Christians do not pray for me. They pray against me or they'll, you know, pray for my downfall or destruction, you know, but they might have a few Christians that pray for me, you know, because they care, but it's not that many. Um... But they have some professed Christians who are not aware of the targeting program. And so they will be pretty much kind of insensitive or don't believe you. I mean, if, if you go to a random church and, t and talk, tell a um, church pastor about your targeting, you know, he'll probably run you out the doggone church. So... Thanks for listening to me, and I love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.